In this video, I would like to share with my audience about a couple of really interesting behind the scenes stories regarding the web drama Asian detective Xia Tan Jian Bu Zhi. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where junky and good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. You probably didn't see this video coming. I kind of didn't see it coming either until a friend of mine reminded me that there seems to be some quarrel going on between the scriptwriter of Ancient Detective and its director online. And I found some really interesting information that I would love to share with all the people who have watched Ancient Detective and loved it. So what happened was this drama was written by a two-person team and they are student and teacher relationship. The teacher guy is Pang Sanjing, as you would see in the credits. And he has a Weibo account. During the airing of this drama, he has sent out multiple posts complaining about how the production team, particularly the director, screwed up his writing, changed his setups, made stupid mistakes that resulted in the damage to his script and story quality. And it was actually really fun to read through all those posts and realize how much the writers care about their work and also making you really empathize with his frustration. Had the director treated the script with more respect, this drama could potentially be even better than what you see today. So I've collected those things on his Weibo account and I want to share with all the lovers of this story. First, if you are ever wondering about the lead character Dian Bu Zhi's age. Chronologically, when he first woke up under the tree and couldn't remember who he was, that is when he was 16 years old. So the majority of the plot happened around when he is 24 years old, eight years after the big fight at Shenjigu. That is also related to a part of very important plot that the drama didn't quite explain it clearly to the audience, which is since Jian Bu Zhi at the end of the drama, you already realize he is Wang Hua, the bad guy from the beginning. Then why would he misunderstood himself as the son of the owner of Shenjigu? In the original script, the writer actually wrote, when Wang Hua slash Jian Bu Zhi woke up under the tree, he lost all his memory and he only had this jade piece that you see later in this drama in his hand. He heard the villagers chatting and talking about what has just happened in Shenjigu, pointing at him and saying, wow, how lucky he survived. At least Shenjigu has an heir because he doesn't have memory. He heard other people calling him that way. He thought, wow, okay, I am the son of this owner of this valley and then he went in and spent eight years learning stuff there. So that's actually written in the original script, but didn't get filmed in the drama. So it kind of created this vacuum of space where things are not really explained in terms of how can a guy mistake his own identity as someone else. And because everyone else is dead in Shenjigu, so nobody comes out and tell him that you are not Jian Bu Zhi. Then the writer said the director didn't pay attention to his work to the point that it really did affect the detective plot line. In his original script, during the first case in Han Yue Shenzhuang, when the Da Shishun died in the flower bed, the reason that the servant mistook that person as Da Shishun, which later turned out to be Wu Lingar, is because Da Shishun had very long beard. So that's the character setup from the first moment he showed up on screen. He should have a very, very big beard. So the killer basically had a big beard put on herself and lying there to fool the servant to make him believe it is the Da Shishun who's dead. But when this writer went on set while they were filming, just to see what's going on, he realized they are already filming the part of that plot, but the actor who plays the Da Shishun didn't have a beard. So he was like, uh, did you forget that? You know, like if he doesn't have a beard, how am I going to play out that part of the plot? And can you believe it? It is actually due to the production crew's lack of attention. They forgot to style that character with a big beard. And because they've already filmed that character's plot for a few days, they cannot go back to refilm it. It will cost extra money. They have a very small budget. It's literally unaffordable. So they had to change the plot to make Wu Lingar a 
expert of Yi Rongshu, changing the face kind of technique that is very common in wuxia world. That's not the original design from the scriptwriter, and the scriptwriter hated it because it is not something that you should pull off all the time. It's not like everybody should be an expert of how to change your face into other people. So the scriptwriter was super pissed off. But um, yeah, that is how carelessly the crew is treating the script, causing this kind of problem. And it's not the only problem like this in this drama. The crew has also taken some very easy route in terms of filming certain scenes just because the way it's written is not that easy to do. The big fight that happened between Zhan Si and Zhao Huan at night in the forest was written as a much more extended scene. There are more things going on in terms of how they fought, how many times they come across each other, how Zhao Huan lost and then won. So the whole process is longer. And the production cut it really short. The writer actually put out the original script that he wrote. And the way that he made Zhao Wohuan win is a different way, as you see in the drama. Everything happened pretty much similarly in terms of Zhao Wohuan getting one arm broken and wounded, and he is no match to Zhan Si. And during the moment when the cloud covers the moon and there's no light, he used a trick that he suddenly got inspired by the talk he had earlier about being slow and being weak and how you can win. So what he did in the script, you can decide whether it's more logical, was he tied the saber he has with a piece of cloth on his wrist. And the first attack he threw out was just throwing out that saber, which caused Zhan Si to react and fend it off. That opened him up to attack. And then he pulled this saber back with that cloth and then stabbed him. That is how he managed to be the person who is stronger than him. I'm guessing because that is harder to film. Like how do you do the uh, physics, right? Of tying something, throwing out and it will work and then you pull it back. Maybe that's why they did the version that you see in the drama. And also during the scene, actually there's more OST. There's more thinking happening in Zhao Wohuan's mind. Uh, that is like a voiceover you see also, that's done by uh, Zhan Shiqi's role very often in this drama, and that all got cut out. In terms of the two extra episodes that I think some people are aware of already, and if you are not, the drama is 24 episodes, but it has two extra episodes that happened between when they went to Yan Shan Pai and <laughs> climbed over the wall and a knight got caught to Wen Jian Bu Zhi realized the leader of the Yan Shan Pai is dead. There's actually two episodes uh, in between that got totally cut out in the official cut, but still got put out on Youku. So that is a kind of face-off game between the Yan Shan Pai four people, the white clothes all named with animal people, and Jian Bu Zhi's team. The writer didn't put out the script online about those two episodes. But what he said is the original writing of that is more exciting and the version that you see in the two extra episodes is a watered down, also changed version. That's really not his original vision. There's also a part that got cut out that the writer think is very essential, which is towards the end of the drama. When you see the fat guy Xiao Wang later turn out to be Ming Er Shiliu, also belonging to the assassins group, there's actually a big conversation between him and Ming Yue, the second female lead, blaming her for becoming too soft because she has fallen in love with the male second lead and is not carrying out what she's supposed to do. He also spelled out very clearly that he is going to take her place to kill Jian Bu Zhi because she will be the future heir to that entire organization and because she belongs to the spy part, if her identity is exposed, she will not be able to do it anymore. That entire big section between these two roles exchange got totally cut out. And at the very end of this drama, the last scene when there is a samurai-like person who clearly comes from Japan, said a couple of lines that kind of is suggesting they're chasing after Jian Bu Zhi and Jian Bu Zhi was initially under their control, but somehow that magical medicine they used to control him has lost its effect. Whereas the original writing, that samurai actually said a line that goes like this. My surname is Jian. I just came back from Japan. Can you tell me how to go to Shenji Valley, Shenji Gu? So that means the original design of this role is Wang Hua is Wang Hua. He is never Jian Bu Zhi. There's actually a real Jian Bu Zhi who was also in Japan and just came back. 
So in terms of why the drama changed it to the current line that you see, I have no idea. But now you know the original design is different. The even more funny thing about this uh, scriptwriter is when the drama came out and when there's certain discrepancies in terms of logic and little things people are not happy about the story, naturally most of the audience would complain about script writing because it's like, ah, the story is badly written, blah, 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 blah. And there are people who are writing those posts on Douban, on Weibo, saying these things. And the scriptwriter discovered one of those people actually is the director himself. So he's blaming a lot of shortcomings and failure of this trauma on the scriptwriter when actually the scriptwriter wrote different things. It is him who didn't actually film it, following the script for all kinds of reasons. And the scriptwriter did some detail detective work, searching the account's history, linking it to other similar accounts, and looking at, you know, years and years of comments that these people have made, and drew the conclusion that um, that person who is saying so many bad things about this drama, especially blaming it on the scriptwriter, is actually the director. And he posts that entire thing out on his account, and everybody reading it was like, oh, such a big gua, a big melon. It's a Chinese internet term that means, um, yeah, gossips. And the director didn't really talk back, deny it, because it's kind of obvious when you see through that. And so the script writer was like, you're such a bad director. I went on set to see how you work and you didn't treat the actors well. You had some really weird problematic aesthetics that made the finished product not as good as it could be. For example, he mentioned that when you see a lot of close-ups in this drama, it will be framed at a really awkward position, which I honestly say I did notice during watching the drama. You'll see a lot of times they would frame the person's forehead and the collarbone like that. So it's always cut at a really weird position, whereas the ideal one, if you really want to make the face very big, and because ancient hair is like very tall, so you don't necessarily show the entire hair, you probably go like this. Like this type of framing is a, is a comfortable framing. And you do realize while you're watching this drama, a lot of close-ups are cut at this weird position that just doesn't look good with that very narrow framing. I thought they added basically the uh, letterbox in post-production to make it look like that. And it's just the post-production people who didn't move the stuff you know, to the ideal position. But apparently, apparently the script writer told us it is the director's preference to frame it in that way, forcing the cameraman to, to do that framing when the camera crew was like, it's not how we do it. And you do see a lot of beautiful shots in this drama and it's totally designed and done by the cinematographer. Clearly a very competent team who knows how to make stuff look good on camera. But when it comes to close-up framing, the director forced them to frame it in the absolutely weird way that the industrial standard just doesn't agree with. And I laughed so much at that point. I was like, oh my god, you solved a mystery. While I was watching, I was very uncomfortable with that framing, but I never thought it was actually something like this due to this reason. So I replied in the comment section of this scriptwriter's Weibo post and I was like, oh, you solved my mystery. Now I know why it is so ridiculous this could even happen. And he immediately replied. He clearly reads all his uh, comments and replied them really quickly. So I've had a very short conversation with him on Weibo and he replied like at lightning speed. So you can tell the scriptwriter really does care about his work a lot. He also told people that basically the copyright of this story is in his hand and his fellow writer, who is also his student. So he was like, if second season ever happens, it will still be written by him and his student and nobody else can touch it. Personally, I just so look forward to the next season of this drama. I really want it to happen. Now, because of what I know about the uh, quarrel between the director and the scriptwriter, I even have more confidence in terms of if they get a more qualified person to sit at the helm, we can potentially get an even better second season story. At the end of this video, just sharing an extra piece of information. If you've been on Discord, you probably already know. The lead actor of Jianbu Zhi Yu Jiwei was actually a Beijing opera performer before he applied to acting school and actually become an actor. So he had years of training in Beijing opera and playing sheng roles, so the young man's roles. He can sing and he can do a lot of those pretty cool physical moves that you see in Beijing opera that I've talked about in my 
winter begonia related videos. I'll share a little bit stuff that I've seen online of him singing Beijing Opera. <laughs> And also attempting doing some very difficult move under the request of our second male lead actor Wang Yanyang. What? These two guys seem to have a really good friendship in real life too. And um, please, please just give me the second season. Now I just can't wait when I discovered this background story of Ancient Detective. Do let me know. After knowing all this information, are you looking forward to this drama second season even more and hoping it can happen? Thank you for watching App New X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.